I actually do this a lot in the morning for about two hours where the pets are outside and I'm inside, but I leave the door open and I run the heater. So I'm warm, but I don't know. They don't really care. It's only 40, 45 degrees out. It got to under 30 degrees last night. Now, the reason I grabbed the camera was I wanted to show you how close we are to shore. And I'm going to show you some pictures over the last week and a half or two weeks that I've been here about how far we had we were 50 60 feet from shore before um with beach between us and there just with the water level so i'll show you the water level change over the last you know i've been thinking about days. the deck a lot someone asked me how do i decide what i'm going to do that day like uh, if you're going to go work on the house or if you're going to stay on the boat it's really i like I want to ha be motivated for a project that I'm doing. So if I if I don't really feel like cutting wood that day, I'm not going to go do it. So the last last night I was thinking about using any of the boards that have the double live edge cutting them at 36 inches and placing them about 2 or 3 inches apart to be the rail to be the posts that go up and down between the railings to stop people to fall off like the cat and dog from falling off and it would be I think that would be kind of a really cool use of that wood where you could see the whole thing I was walking around the neighborhood with my mom and I could tell she had some shit up on her mind turned to me and said, Mike, don't you want to meet someone? I said, no, I want to meet everyone. I want to get drunk with the punks and do bump with the king. I want to creep down the hall and go to bed with the queen. And when they come for my head, well, I'll be somewhere at sea, singing loud, singing proud. It's good to be free, cause I won't waste another day. Live in someone else's way. I want to be happy. I want to be free. Fuck what they say. I'm doing me. My mama said, but Mike, don't you want to be comfortable? I said, no. I don't want to be comfortable. I want to be scared out of my head and lost out of my mind. I want to fall in and out of love of you thousand times i want to spend all of my money on my friends and on drugs and i want to ride around on a horse and give people hugs and when i come into town they'll say oh shit there's mike there's something wrong with that boy i swear he just ain't right because i won't waste another day living someone else's way i want to be just really that look i'm going for for the fence going up I the boards are too long to fit in my truck where they hang out too much and so I'm gonna cut a four feet off of them a couple of things to mention slowly. I just put a line here but because there's no even side I don't know that that line is straight the way you could get around this is you could cut a straight four foot board lay it on match the ends and then do the line with that and that way you would end up I feel like this whole fence is going to look like rustic and I don't need to have straight lines. So I'm going to cut it there and see how it looks. If I have to take a little bit more off or whatever it is what it is. So this board is 18 inches wide down here and only uh, 10 inches wide up there. So And then it's split right here in the middle. So I'm going to cut two feet off of this and get my four feet. That's eight feet left. So that's going to be the scrap part. Kind of the same as when you're reclaiming wood you're just kind of picking the best part you can out of the wood that you're grabbing and then it looks perfect i know it can get overwhelming looking at logs stacked like this look at this that's cherry my mom had some pennsylvania furniture growing up that we weren't allowed to touch that was made of cherry wood so I'm very excited to play with that. <laughs> River, leave him alone. Okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to catch it on film. There's a carpenter bee whose home must be around here because he's guarding 
my sight. And I don't know if you've ever seen... Yeah, he's right over there on the railing. They're just like big bumblebees, but they're, they definitely, they live in wood. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen my episodes where I, I'll pull up on an island and there'll be those around. And they chase off every kind of bug. They chase off dragonflies, they chase off black flies, they chase off, chase off mosquitoes. It's like having a little insect warrior that defends your area. So I personally like them. Um, and then I've walked into them while they're chasing these bugs and they bounce off of you and they don't sting you. They don't get mad. I bet if you were to accidentally pinch one, like between your arm and your stomach or something, it would sting you, but they're not aggressive towards people. And they sure do get rid of black flies and biting flies super quick. So I don't mind them being around. River gets annoyed by them, but after I get, after he gets used to it being here, he's okay with it. So I'll try to find right, it. So we are back at the property and this is what I brought with me. I'm going to grab one here. Kind of show you what I'm thinking of doing. Yeah. Just mounting it in the back here, like that. Let's see. All right, this is, this, everything I keep doing out here gets cooler and cooler. Uh, I could sit and look at this all day. The gaps are all different. The boards are all different. There's some a thick one in there. Otherwise, everything is kind of almost the same. And no way could river fall off right there. And I don't, I mean, Cricket would have to purposely try to get through there to go off. So, yeah. I'm going to show you some stuff that I did that I didn't want to stop the fast time lapse for. Number one, I'll show you the underneath. See how there's no screws showing underneath? And there's no screws showing on the top? What I did on the top one, I used a three inch screw, but if you look, there's only teeth on the end of it. So the three inch screw went through these two boards into this board and is actually centered on that board pulling the other two boards in on it. That's making this stiffer and this stiffer. And then you don't see the screw on here. Now, number one about that is, that is a skill that I've only recently acquired and I wasn't always good at that. I used to have to screw 15 times to get to stay in a little board like this. So, the other thing is, what do you think it looks so good? Bad dog. He's a guardian bee. He's a guardian bee. Leave him alone. He's a good bee. River. They just traded off. This is a new bee. New bee guarding us right now. Now, I am really considering doing this for the side of my house. And what you do is you would take another one and put it on top of the gap. And it would be a board and batten. So you wouldn't see the natural edge on the first layer. You only see the natural edge on the batten part. And it would just be using this exact same type of wood to do the siding all the way around the house. This is one way to do it. You can also do it horizontal where it overlaps from the top and then overlaps on the bottom. Sticks underneath on the top and overlaps on the bottom and it's horizontal. That's another way to do the house. but. I am really, I, I kind of like this, where you would simply just take another board and put it right there. Dunk. So they're all, and it ends up being two inches of board of board siding outside of the tie vac wrap that you have on the house. 
I wanted to also point out when I walk around this deck, right? There is so right here, you hear that? I touch that board, and you can hear there's something like it just doesn't. If it, you can feel it's moving, you can hear there's something wrong with it. The only place on this deck that that happens is right there, and right away you you could tell why because I missed two screws right here. So if you're walking around your deck and you kind of feel where something, see this is one screw missing right here. And you can hear it. Right there. One, boom, boom. No screw on this board. So if you're, you know, if you're walking around your deck and you feel something loose, that you missed the screw. He's tired. We're going to go back to the boat. It's going to thunderstorm. Well, this is a good project. I am going to, I really think I'm going to blow torch them and just pull off the bark. And maybe, but we'll see. I don't know if I want to get like charcoal on the dog and the cat, so I might use tongue oil on them. I'll think about that tomorrow. On a different note, I am moving docks at the marina. There's a new couple living in the boat right next to me starting next weekend and i like to be the only one on the dock so i'm gonna move my boat to a dock where there's no other liveaboard boats where basically all the other boats on my dock are ski boats fishing boats or pontoon boats and no one's gonna spend the night overnight here so i'm gonna move here's a new spot on the end dock i like it it's just me and then water, you know? And then no one's gonna walk past the boat to make river bark. And I'm the only one, now I'm back to being the only one who lives on the dock full time. Everyone else on this dock is just a, you know, a ski boat or a fishing boat or a pontoon boat. They're not gonna sleep overnight. I just had one of those scary things happen where I'm cruising. I was videotaping, so I'll show it to you. And I'm a, my whole plan is just drive parallel to the shore and then cut hard right to go into the river. And I kind of hear a motor in the background. I look over and sure as shit, there's a guy buzzing me at like, you know, 45 miles an hour and I'm going maybe 12. And I was about ready to cut right in front of him. And you just, you have to look before you turn. Even though you're like, I'm in the middle of the lake. No one's around me. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. You still got to look before you make any sharp turns. Otherwise, you could be just asking for trouble. And then when you get hit, it's one thing to get in an accident when you're in a car with airbags, you know. A boat's pretty much like getting in an accident with a motorcycle where you don't have no airbags. You're going to fly out of here. But then when you fly out, no matter what happens to you, you're in the water. So like if you're unconscious, if you got a broken arm and you can't swim, if you break an arm and a leg, good luck swimming. You know, Ugh, all of it goes down here. That's why people who go 25, 30, or 100 mile an hour just wear light vests. And that's why I should wear a light vest. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, but at least I know smart people. What are you guys up to? Cricket. River. River. What are you guys doing? Oh, they're partners in crime.
to be fair, I mean, nothing could really happen to cricket if rivers around. You know? <laughs>